Hey guys, um, I decided to make a, a video on how um, I make an 18th century uh, shot bag. Um, I shot a, a doe earlier this year, or actually it's last year, it's 2023 now, um, but unfortunately it wasn't with my flintlock, it was with a modern rifle. But uh, I have one of my brothers, he likes to mess with deer hides and uh, tan them, and so we decided we're going to try a bark tan. It's the first time he tried it, and I think it turned out well. He doesn't, but anyway, um, I'm going to make a shot pouch with this bark tanned deer hide. <clears throat> I've cut out the uh, the pattern here. Now this is I'm trying something a little bit different with this one. Um, but before we get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about shot pouches. Um, there's obviously not a whole lot of surviving original shot pouches from the 18th century, especially the mid 18th century, which is my time period. Um, supposedly there's a few of, of them um, that have survived from the late 18th century. But from what we know, um, from images, from the very few surviving ones, and from descriptions, it seems like for the most part, in the mid 18th century shot pouches were pretty small. Um, this one here, <clears throat> I'm kind of going by the dimensions, you know, um, that I get from historical references and what have you. This one is going to be about seven inches, seven and a quarter inches square. Um, what I've done, I normally cut out separate pieces and um, stitch them together, but I decided to try it, and I think I've heard that they may have done this. I'm not really sure about that. Done it in one piece. So what it is, this is the body and this is the flap. <clears throat> so I just simply fold this over, and I sew it down here and along the bottom, and then this will be the flap, which I will shape later. Um, there's lots of different bag shapes um, it's it's really hard to tell <clears throat> you know be really specific when it comes to bags so therefore we can take a little bit of uh, license in kind of putting our own taste in there too maybe um, this one I am trying to um, fashion in a manner that you know maybe a guy that um, a market hunter let's say you know he's out um, he's away from civilization for the most part and uh, he needs a new bag um, he shot a deer he's going to use the hide to make himself a bag that's kind of what I'm doing here um, I think that was done but also back in the settlements I think they had saddle makers and what have you leather workers also make bags so <clears throat> anyway um, I'm going to incorporate a number of different things that I've um, seen in a few images. Um, I've done a lot of looking on the internet and other people, you know, bag makers, modern bag makers that seem to have done a lot of research. Um, I'm, you know, taking some ideas from them as well, putting in a few of my own ideas. Uh, so we'll kind of see how this all works out. Okay, so most of the time, um, a lot of people pre-punch their holes for the sewing. Um, like I said, I'm going to sew it down here and along the bottom. Um, sometimes I've, I've done that already, but in this one I'm not going to because I've got this needle. Um, I don't know if you all can see that, but it's a, it's a very sharp, it's actually got three sharp edges on it. Um, I use this for um, wildlife taxidermy. Um, you don't really need to pre-punch holes because this is very sharp. And also I'm going to include a welt. Um, I'm going to include a welt in the sewn edges here. And that's basically just a strip of leather about a quarter inch wide and um, it lays in if I can get it together here it lays in the, the sewn edge, basically between these two edges. Um, 
that I'm going to be sewing together. It goes in between there because when this is finished, I'm actually doing this backwards. I need to, I'm going to sew it inside out. So this is the inside. And then when it's finished, I'm going to turn it inside out, right side out, however you want to term it. And um, <clears throat> it'll be finished. But this, this welt will show a little bit between these two edges. It, it helps uh, strengthen it. It helps hide the uh, stitching, help protect the stitching. Um, that's kind of the purpose of it. So I'm going to get my uh, thread here and start sewing. And I'm not going to bore you all with that. I might show you the few first stitches. I'm, I'm using uh, my friend Nathan Jeffrey gave me this. This is very similar to like the linen wax thread. Um, this was this was called, it's a waxed, um, but it was like a cordage of some kind, or a cord, they called it. I'm um, not exactly sure what it is, but I've got a lot of it, so I'm going to use it. Alright, so we're going to start this here. I've got it turned inside out. Put this welt in here. I don't know if I can do this. And I'm going to use uh, a back stitch on this. If you all can see this or not, this is kind of poor lighting. But uh, so basically, going through the three pieces of leather, I'm going to actually tie this off. This first one. Okay. I think I'm going to get me some clothes pins and pin this together um, to hold it together because I'm having a hard time keeping all these three together. Be right back. Alright, so I changed my mind. I'm going to use just a running stitch all the way down and then come back through the opposite way and it'll be like a back stitch. I tried the back stitch. I have no clue what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do it the way I know how. Um, <clears throat> keeping my stitches about <clears throat> a good eighth apart just going one way come back the other way just a simple running stitch so I'll get this stitched up and I'll get back with you alright guys so I've got it sewn up here I don't know if you can see this very well or not um, I just did a simple uh, running stitch all the way down turn around and came back through the opposite way so it looks like that now we're going to uh, soak this thing in water for a couple minutes and turn it inside out okay this has been uh, soaking for a bit so we're gonna go ahead and try to invert it So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut kind of this this front. I'm going to cut it down a little bit, about like that. That's the next step. Okay, guys, here's the uh, <coughs> pouch so far. Still not totally dry, but I'm going to keep working on it. Um, I'm going to put the straps on next. Um, this is a short strap here. And I'm going to be putting this buckle on it. Um, I just made a, a slit in it for the tongue to fit into. And uh, I'll sew this here. Sew the buckle on and that'll attach back here to this side. Now um, I like buckles on my pouches to adjust the straps with. Um, this buckle here is actually a, uh, a copy of an original found in, uh, let me see if I can pronounce the name, Awietanon, Fort Awietanon, Indiana. I probably messed that up. <clears throat> but it's an 18th century fort in uh, Indiana. 
and uh, this is a copy of one that was found there. Um, and then of course I'm going to put the other, sh I have another strap here I'm going to be putting on the other side. And um, because this buckle does not have, it's not a two-piece buckle, um, I'm going to put a little, um, not sure the proper name for it, put this around uh, to where the strap can fit down in there. I'm also going to put a little piece uh, <clears throat> like this right here onto the strap so it on there so that I can uh, attach my uh, my pick, my brush and my um, shot or my powder measure to that because I like to have those hanging from my uh, strap. <clears throat> 